Hello guys, welcome back to another roundup video for the month. It is that time of the year already. We have gone through an entire month and I've seen 15 films in January that came out. That is a record, so let's rank them. Yes, 15 new movies came out uh, in this month and I didn't even get to watch them all. There was a few that I did miss, which I will acknowledge at the end of the video, but 15 titles. I, I have never found the time to watch 15 films in a month before. I hope you guys really appreciate the effort that I go to, to to do these videos and stuff. There's obviously a lot of time that I need to give to obviously watch the movies and stuff like that. And you know, this is just how I like to do it. I like to do a video for each movie and then review it and stuff like that. Everyone's different on YouTube. Um, this is my journey. My journey on YouTube is trying to educate myself and watch as many films as possible. And 15 in a month is pretty good going. That's two every other, that's one every other day rather. That's, that's pretty good. So in bottom place, in 15th then, we have Night Swim. Um, one of the worst films ever. I gave it a one star. Um, one of the worst films of the year, 100% it's going to be. Um, I said in my review, it felt very much like a college movie, like as if somebody made it for like their coursework in like school. Um, it felt very amateur, very, very bad in terms of a, a filmmaking exercise that would be in the cinema. You know, there's better films on Netflix, for God's sake, that ain't in the cinema. So how this Night Swim film got greenlit to be in the cinema, I'll never know. Um, and weirdly, it's a film that was probably one of the busiest in terms of people actually go to watch horror films a lot, um, and which is probably why it was in cinemas, you know, because people pay to go to have that experience with horrors, um, of course. So I gave it a one star, very subpar, acting was meh, and the whole story was just meh. So uh, so one star for me. Unfortunate start then, but it's always gonna be, it's only gonna be get better every time. And in at number 14, we have Foe. This is the Amazon Prime video movie original, I think. It's an MGM studio, so obviously they own it and they put it on Prime straight after. Yeah, Foe, it came out towards the end of last year, I think in America. Uh, we got in the UK early January. So uh, this stars Sayozu Ronan and Paul Meskel. Very good concept movie um, with some nice twists at the end, but just wasn't executed very well. I gave it a two star. It landed in some parts, but didn't land in other parts. I definitely was more excited when I read about like the blurb and was like really excited in that synopsis of like what's gonna happen and, and all that. Uh, it's set in the year 2065 and like everyone kind of wants to leave Earth because like Earth has like had global warming and the planet's not like looked after and all of that jazz. So it's that kind of thing, if that makes sense. Um, but it just wasn't executed very well, um, but it was a decent like potential there and yeah, unfortunate. In at number 13 then we have a Netflix movie now so you know we are getting up up the list a little bit again another two star and this is for lift this stars um kevin hart um there's a few other stars in this movie the guy who plays kingpin i can't remember his name there's a few other stars in this film it's called lift and yeah it's a decent film. Like I enjoyed the first like maybe 45 minutes um, and then it just started to go a bit downhill. It looked decent for a Netflix film, but it did give me that vibes of like a TV movie, if you know what I mean. Um, Kevin Hart was playing a somewhat more of a serious role as well, which I thought was pretty good. But you know, it's a Netflix film and it was something that had potential, which didn't really live up to it. Um, I did say in the review, I'd like to see a second one. I think they could do a second, second movie. I think it would be pretty good so the stunt work was good but it was like an action movie and once you've seen it you've seen it so yeah in at number 12 then we have a cinema movie which is probably the one that's probably hasn't hit the heights for me that i wanted it to uh this is priscilla uh priscilla is the new um elvis presley you know based on his wife's movie um and i just found the film to be very same same maybe that's just telling about her life in terms of what her life was like but it was a boring film it was very same same it was very like lax daisy i thought the acting was okay it didn't didn't progress didn't get any better it was just meh and unfortunately it gave it a two star there was no elvis in there at all um which is fine by me it wasn't about elvis at all really i wasn't really caring about seeing more elvis um just the story was a bit dull and um, some of the, like the whole aesthetic of how the film looked and how it was shot just it didn't really land for me um, I gave it a two star and it finished at number 12. In at number 11 and Jess Pippin over uh, Priscilla is Freelance this is the Amazon Prime video similar to Foe um, this well, stars John Cena and it's a bit of an action movie very similar to like The Lost City with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum basically John Cena's character is like working freelance um, to try and save this like journalist 
um, in a dangerous country in a jungle. Um, it's a funny, it's got some funny moments in there, it's got some fun humour moments, it's, a, you know, it's got some good action scenes that go for it, some good action shots as well with like he use of helicopters and stuff. Uh, you can tell that in some of the shots they've used helicopters in a real life environment which is nice to see. But that's as far as it goes. I couldn't give her any more than that because like it was made like a TV movie, it was a bit dull and a bit low budget. But it had potential. If they threw a bit more money at it, it could have probably scored a bit higher. But I gave it a two star. Top ten now then. So here we go. Two and a half star. I gave to The Beekeeper. This is the new Jason Statham movie. Who is basically playing this undercover agent. Who is like part of the hive. And he is a beekeeper. It's one of those suspense building movies that builds his way up throughout the film. There's definitely a lot of action in there of course involving Jason Statham and um, also a lot of British actors in the film as well I will say that. It is a Sky original so that might have something to do with it um, but it was released in cinemas similar to what like, Ferrari has done the past couple of months. Um, but I gave it a two and a half star and it's just scraped in there a little bit because like the choreography was really good. I even mentioned the score in my review being really good for somebody who's never done a movie score before. I can't remember his name but it was pretty decent so yeah two and a half star for the beekeeper and in number nine then we have role play which stars Katie Kwoku and David Oyewulumu um this is an Amazon Prime video movie uh two and a half star nice to see Penny from Big Bang Theory in a movie um she definitely has a wider scope in terms of her acting in terms of just being Penny on Big Bang Theory first time I've seen her in anything else really enjoyed how she, what she played in this film definitely had a lot of layers to her character that she could she could explore and I was very pleasantly surprised with it. Um, yeah, I gave it a two and a half star. Had some good action moments in there, um, but it just was one of those old school comedies. It felt a bit like, you know, back in the day, just you want a bit more and it doesn't give you that bit more. It, it has its heights and, and that's where it's it. So yeah, I gave it a two and a half star. Number eight then, and the best two and a half star is Mean Girls. This is the Mean Girls sequel. Well, the third Mean Girls movie because there's already one and two but this is the one based on the musical so it's like the first story again but in the musical form I gave it a two and a half star I think it was a very pleasant film to watch there were some amazing shots in there going like one shot going from one classroom all the way around to like these dancers and then back out into the hallway and then the whole set would have changed I'm not sure how they did it I watched it trying to see if I could find the cuts I couldn't find any at all really so it was a very nice shot movie some good acting performances I think the singing could have been a bit better Renee Rapp definitely saves the movie for me and some of the songs are okay I've been listening to one in particular but other than that it's quite a once you've seen it, you've seen it, and now we move on to something else kind of film. Um, two and a half star. Number seven then, and this is a Netflix film, and we're jumping straight up to a three and a half star. This is Good Grief. Uh, now, Good Grief is a uh, is a movie on Netflix, uh, directed and starring Dan Levi. It's his first film um, that he's, like, directing and, and also shooting. It stars Luke... Evans, Himesh Patel, Ruth Niga, and it's a it's an interesting film about you know losing like your husband or loved one and you know trying to deal with that and learning things about them after the fact. I think it had some really good moments in the beginning of the film. I really enjoyed the first hour and a bit of the film, but then at the end it just started to lose a bit of itself and started to go down a really bit of a strange path. Um, it's one of those but three and a half star um, it was okay it did remind me of like an A24 kind of film you know like has a bit bit of a, like an India edge to it if you know what I mean but um, yeah nothing nothing drastic so yeah I gave that a three and a half Number six then, and the worst four star movie of the month, this was in the cinema, this is The Colour Purple. Now, The Colour Purple is uh, a remake from a Steven Spielberg movie, um, and this is like the new new version of it. I was very on the fence about giving this a three and a half star, but I had to give it a four because of like the look of the film and also the, the whole costumes and acting was, was second to none, it was great. But that's as far as it went. I think for me, in terms of plot wise, I think the plot was a bit dragged out and, and you know, very very strung along. It was a long film for what he was trying to do. Um, it didn't need to be as long as it was. The songs, again, I think the songs in Mean Girls probably were a little bit more catchy and better, but that's to be expected in terms of the audience. Uh, I haven't found myself wanting to listen to the songs after the fact, which, you know, it is a musical, so 
say with that what you will, I guess. But the acting performances, you can't go, you can't deny it. It's amazing. They are, they were really good performances from both the young versions of the characters as well as the older versions. Um, but there's also some hard hitting stuff in the film as well. So, you know, a bit of a warning there if you don't want anything else too sensitive, of course. Top five now then, and another four star. This is Saltburn now. This is taking over the internet with Murder on the Dance Floor, which is like one of my favorite songs from back in the day. But Barry Keogh is uh, starring in this film and it is a really, really, really good movie movie i gave it a five star initially you watch it and you're kind of weirded out but then when you sit on it and you do a bit of research about it um you know i had to I had to increase my score so four star for me some of the performances were fantastic it was a really edgy film and it's going to be one of those ones that you just want to watch in a couple of months time again you know so i can't wait to get like a 4k release of this um it is currently on amazon prime uh, in the uk but hopefully it comes out physically um, because I would like to have that in my collection, definitely. Uh, but I gave that a four star for Salt Burn. Number four, then, we have uh, a new movie in the cinema which came out a couple of months ago in America. This is The Holdovers. This is nominated for a couple of Oscars. Uh, and this is a movie basically about these kids that are left in a school and they're held over over the Christmas period. It is like one of those films set in Christmas t period, but it's not a Christmas film, I would say. It's a good movie though, it has a good acting performances, it has a good cast, it has a it has a good set pieces and everything. I gave it a four star, I think Paul Giamatti does fantastic in the film, um, and yeah, I gave it a four star. In at number three now then, and again another four star movie, but the best of the lot for me was One Life. This is the new movie starring Helen Bona Carter, as well as Anthony Hopkins. And this is the true story movie about uh, Nicholas Winton, who Anthony Hopkins' character plays. Um, and he basically was like, uh, and just a normal British person but back in the war he went over to Prague to try and save loads of children get them like visas and on trains and and then foster homes to save them during the war before the Nazis you know struck and, and you know killed loads of the killed loads of children um it's a true story very warming story um I watched it on a Saturday morning with quite a fair few people in the cinema it was very good I gave it a four star and um, yeah, it's definitely going to be one I want to watch again very soon. Uh, it was amazing. So yeah, four star. Number two then, and this is like one that's going to have a very special part in my heart. It's a Netflix movie that I saw in the cinema uh, with a live Q&A from Bradley Cooper and Kerry Mulligan. This, of course, is Maestro. Another movie nominated for Oscars and everything. I gave it a four and a half star. Um, it's directed and starring Bradley Cooper, of course, and um, Kerry Mulligan performs fantastic in this there's a lot of great shots in this film if you get a chance to just like look at this on netflix just do it it's 100 percent worth it i would recommend obviously watching the cinema it's all about music and it's about leonard bernstein who is like this amazing composer um of like music as well as conductor um and they used to call him the maestro hence the name of the movie um you know loved a lot of what was in here the prosthetics were fantastic for uh for bradley he definitely looked a lot older come the end of the film and the, the opening scene in the movie he is like the older version of him so if you just start the film and want to see how Bradley looks it's amazing you should check it out uh, but yeah four and a half star 100% want to get like the vinyl of his music and all that and I also want to get the uh, the blu-ray when it comes out if it does I hope it does uh, but yeah that's number two so in at number one and likely to be one of my films of the year come the end of the year is poor things this is the new Emma Stone movie of course she plays Bella Baxter also stars Willem Dafoe Mark Ruffalo and is directed by Yorgos Lantimos it's obviously not nominated for a ton of Oscars I cannot wait I'm it's one of my films of the year I 100% want this to win at the moment the best film um it is a fantastic piece of art in my opinion brilliant score brilliant feelings you know in terms of the performance but uh, Emma Stone plays like a character that's got so many different like levels um it's like a mentally unstable like got the mind of a child so I think she executes it perfectly I think she does very well in the role the whole look and aesthetics of like the set it was actually filmed on like a sound stage um Yorgos actually used like a fisheye lens in some shots he used black and white to then color to to emphasize how Bella was you know growing up and 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 becoming more of an adult uh, so she could see more light kind of thing and her life wasn't so gray and dull and and all that amazing use of art and just everything is something that you have to watch in my opinion it's a comedy it's got funny moments in there as well um and then the supporting cast like mark ruffalo and, and willem dafoe just steal the show like do you mean as well so for me poor things is very hard to beat this year um at the moment but yeah five star amazing couldn't find anything i, I didn't 
like about it at all. So there it is, guys. There is my top 15 movies of January 2024. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree? Of course, like always, if you want to watch any of these reviews in detail, just go on the channel. They're all on there. There's entire videos to every single one. Go over there if you want to watch any more detail from what I've said. But that is my top 15 of the month. And so far this year, we're off to a storm. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.